Hi students, today we will start our new chapter, chapter 11, class 10 physics, the human eye and the colorful world. See, the eye is one of the most valuable and the sensitive sense organs because it enables us to see the beautiful world and the colorful things around us. See, imagine, if you on closing your eyes, to some extent, you might be able to identify the object just by touching, by listening to the sound or by the smell. But it is not possible to identify the colors on closing the eyes. That means the eye helps us to see the wonderful things around us. So it is one of the most important components, parts of the living object. Now, as we know that the brain is the most complex organ, but as we talk about the complexity, eye is also one of the most complex sense organs next to the brain and the eye is located just below the next to the brain which helps transfer the information very quickly to the brain and the brain interprets the information that we perceive as object now let's study all the parts of the eye one by one first the eye is almost a spherical shape with a diameter of 2.4 cm. The first part of the eye, the first layer of the eye is known as the sclera. Now, sclera is the white portion of the eye which you see. The white layer of the eye that is called sclera. Sclera protects the eye from injury and shocks. Now, if you go deeper inside, the next layer of the eye is known as the choroid and choroid is also known as the blood vessels. Large number of blood uh, vessels are connected inside the eye which provide nourishment to the eye. Now if you look at the front part of the eye, a little bulging, a convex shape, this is known as the cornea. Cornea is transparent. The light entered through this cornea in the eye, inside the eyes. Just behind the cornea, next to cornea, there is a dark muscular membrane, a dark muscular diaphragm, this portion, which is known as the iris. Iris contains large number of color pigments, which give the color to the eye. And right at the center of the iris, there is a circular dark hole, which is known as the pupil, which, which is the aperture of the eye. Now, next to the iris, just behind the iris, there is a double convex lens. And this convex lens is known as the eye lens. And the convex lens gives, forms a real and inverted image. Now, Let's come back to the iris and talk a little more about the iris. Now, the iris not only gives the color to the eye, but it also regulates the amount of the light entering in the eye through pupil. The iris contract and expand itself to control the amount of the light entering in the eye. For example, if you are looking at the sunshine, at the sunlight, or if our eye is exposed to the high uh, luminous uh, object like sunlight, if you are looking at the sunlight, what happens that large amount of lights are entering in the eye. So at this point of time what happens, the iris expands itself. So when the iris expands itself, the size of the pupil becomes smaller. Means when the size of the pupil decreases, large amount of light will not be entered only the necessary amount of light will enter to see the object now second example see if you are standing in a dark room where there is no light or or if our eyes is exposed to the less luminous object like like candle candle gives us less amount of light what will happen the iris contract itself. When the iris contract itself, the size of the pupils become bigger. So when the size of the pupil increase, large more lights 
will enter in the eye. So we want more lights to enter in the eye so that we can see the in the dark room. So the pupil regulates the amount of the light entering in the eye through iris by increasing and decreasing the size of the pupil. Now the back part, the back part of the eye is known as the retina. The retina is also known as the screen of the eye because retina is the portions, the parts of the eye where the image of an object is formed. Retina is the delicate membranes which contains large amount of light sensory cells. There are two types of light sensory cells known as the rods and the cones. The rods and the cones Rods are responsive to the intensity of the light and the cones are responsive to the color of the object. Now, if we come back to the eye lens, the eye lens is held in positions by the ciliary muscles and the suspensory ligaments. Now, this light sensitive cells, rods and the cones in the retina gets activated on the illumination and generates the electric signals. Now these electric signals are carried to the brain through these optic nerves. The optic nerves transfer the information from the retina in the form of electric signals to the brain and the brain interprets the information in the form of object that we perceive. So, for today videos we will study up to this. In the next video we will learn about the working of the human eye and the power of accommodations and some more points. Hi students, uh, we are back with the same chapters with different topics. Today we will learn about the power of accommodations, near point, power points and the range of regions. Now, what is power of accommodation? See, whenever you take a pictures with a camera, let's say a DSLR camera, Every time when you take a picture of a far object or near object, you adjust something in the camera. That is, you are adjusting the focal length of the lens so as to get a clear picture of that object. The same thing here. The human eye is made up of a fibrous jelly-like substance so that its curvature can be modified. Now, if you look at the diagrams on this backboard, a thick lens has a shorter focal length. A thin lens has a longer or greater focal length. Now, let's consider two examples here. In the first example here, in the first diagram, when an object is placed at very far position, the image is formed at the retina and the screen. Now, in the second position, second diagram, when the object is very near to the eye, still the images form at the retina. In this both case, what we observe is that the object distance is different for this two, but the image distance remains the same. How is it possible? It is only possible when the curvature of the eye lens is modified through ciliary muscles either by relax or by contracting. See here, in the beginning we started with this two small diagrams, convex lens with thick lens, thicker curvature has a short focal length and a thin lens has a longer Okay. When an object is very far, when an object is at far positions, the image is focused somewhere here. Now, what happens here? The focal, uh, the curvature of the lens becomes thin here and increase the focal length which helps the image to be focused 
accurately on the retina. In the second case, when the object is brought closer to the object, the image is focused behind the retina. So what happens here? The eye lens increase is curvature by contracting. Therefore, decreasing the focal length and focusing the image on the retina. Let's repeat. In the first case, when an object is placed far away, the image is focused somewhere in front of the retina. So, the eye lens relax, the cilia muscles relax, the eyelids become thin and the focal length of the lens increases which helps to focus the image exactly on the retina. In the second case, when the object is brought closer to the eye, the image is focused behind the retina. Now in this case, the ciliary muscles contract which increases the size of the eye lens. Therefore, decreasing the size of the uh, length of the focal, uh, decreasing the focal length of the lens which focus the image on the retina. In this way, the focal length of the lens is changed. The ability of the eye lens to change its focal length by ciliary muscles either by relaxing or contracting is known as the power of accommodation. Now, however, the focal length of the lens cannot be changed after some uh, limits. For example, when you take a printed face and try to read home closer and try to read it, the image, the printed page appear blurred. So you have to hold to a certain limit to read it. The minimum distance at which the eye can see an image clearly without strain is known as the least distance of the distinct regions. It is also known as the near points. And the near points of a normal eye is 25 cm. Now, the far points, the farthest, the farthest point at which an eye can see object clearly without strain is known as the far points. And the far points for a normal eye is infinity. Now, this least distance and the far points of a normal eye is known as the range of visions. Now, a normal eye can see an image at a distance of closer 25 cm and the farthest infinity. This range which a normal eye can see an object clearly up to 25 centimeters and infinity is known as the range of vision. Hi students, in this class we will learn about the three common refractive defects of visions. Number one, myopia. Number two, hypermetropia. And then number three, presbyopia. Now, Myopia. Myopia is also known as the nearsightedness. So, a person who is suffering from myopia can see nearby objects clearly, but cannot see the far object clearly. A person with suffering myopia will not have any problems in reading because they can see the nearby object objects clearly, but they will have problems in like driving archery and all because they have to see the far object. Now, what are the main causes of this myopia? Number one, due to the elongations of the eyeball means 
the eyeball is greater bigger than the longer than the normal eye or number two cause due to excess curvature of the eye lens means either uh, the eyeball is too long from the normal or the eye lens is too thick than the normal let's see here this is a diagram with the normal eye now what happens here in myopia number one cause is due to the excess curvature of the lens so we have this convex lens with excess curvature and less curvature let's see as we know that a lens which has excess curvature or a thick lens has a short focal length this is a lens which is thin has a longer focal length now in the case of myopia the eye lens is thicker than the normal eye lens so when the eye lens become thick the focal length becomes short so what happens here the image is focused in front of the retina that means the image is focused in front of the retina that means the persons cannot see the image clearly in the second case the this is the eye lens now in the second case what happens due to the elongations of the eyeball means eye ball is longer than the normal so this is a normal eyeball now if the eyeball greater becomes longer than the normal so where is the image focusing still in front of the retina so in both the case either the eyeball is longer or the eye lens is thicker the image is always focused in front of the retina okay now in myopia the image is from in front of the retina now how myopia can be corrected myopia can be corrected by using a concave lens of proper power see here this is a concave lens now concave lens is also known as a diverging lens because it diverts the light rays now here look at this example let's take an example of uh, sports let's say uh, this is a pitch of long jump where you are going to jump now if I give you a short distance let's say point A and I ask you to run from this point A and jump so you will not be you might not be able to jump a greater distance due to the short distance you have so you will not be able to generate much power to jump to jump longer now, but if i ask you to run from the point b if i give you a greater distance and i ask you to run from the point b and jump you might be able to jump longer than the previous jump you might be able to reach this point because you are getting a greater distance you are generating more power understand this situation in the same manner in the myopia since the eye lens is uh, the curvature of the eye lens is greater excess or the eyeball is too long so what happens here the light rays coming from the object now the concave lens will diverge the light rays in such a manner increasing the area of converging this is a convex lens which converts the light ray now the concave lens diverts the light ray coming towards the eye and increase the area of convergence so same like the greater distance the greater power longer you jump 
the greater the area of converging, the longer the focal length. So since the light rays converge from the greater area, it will be able to reach, to, it will be able to focus on the retina. So in this way, the myopia can be corrected by using a concave lens or diverging lens with suitable power. Now, next let's discuss about the hypermetropia. Hypermetropia is also known as the farsightness. A person su suffering with hypermetropia can see the far object clearly but cannot see the near object clearly. Now, what are the main causes of this defect? This defect arises due to the focal length of the lens is eye lens is too long or the eyeball is too small. Let's see both the defects, both the causes of this defect. See, this is a normal eye. Now, if the eyeball is too small than normal, the image which is supposed to focus on the retina is focusing behind the retina. It means hypermetropia. In hypermetropia, the image is focused behind the retina. Number one cause. Second cause, let's see here. This is a normal eye with no defects. Now, number one cause, the eyeball was too small. Number two, the focal length of the eye lens is long. We have here a thick lens with short focal length means a thick lens converts the light rays more, a thin lens less converts the light rays. In turns, focal length is long. Same here, if the curvature of the eye lens is less or the eye lens is very thin, the focal length becomes longer. So, in both the case, small eyeball and a thin lens, the focal length becomes longer and it focuses the image behind the retina. So, what we learn here in hypermetropia, the image is formed behind the retina. And what are the causes? Due to the smaller size of the eyeball or the eye lens is thin or the focal length is long. Hypermetropia can be corrected by using a convex lens with suitable power. Let's see here. This is a convex lens. The convex lens will convert the light rays from here. Now, what happens here? A convex lens is also known as the converging lens. The light ray coming from the object, instead of going in this way, it already come converge. Means the area of converging is decrease here. Since the light rays converge from the smaller area, it will be able to focus the light ray on the retina. Since it reduces the area of converging. Let's see one more time. This is a thin lens, an object, the rays focusing behind. Now, if we use a convex lens here, the light ray already come converging here, therefore reducing the area of convergence. Since the light ray is converging from smaller area, it will converge on the retina. Therefore, forming the image on the retina. Now, the third defect of vision is known as a presbyopia. The ability of the eye lens change its focal length 
huge is uh, due to old age sometimes the ciliary muscles become weak and this defect is known as a presbyopia so what happens in presbyopia the eye lens is able to change its focal length by relaxing the ciliary muscles or contracting the ciliary muscles so this ability become uh, loses due to the old age this ciliary muscles become weak now in this defect is known as presbyopia now in this defect some of the most of the people suffer from myopia they have they find difficult in reading the nearby objects and sometimes people suffer with both hypermetropia and the uh, myopia so this type of defects can be corrected by using a type of lens which is known as the bifocal lens bifocal lens which has both the convex and the concave lens concave lens are the upper portions of the glass and the convex lens are the bottom portion of the lens stay home stay safe do it for yourselves do it for our family do it for india let's break the chain of covid 19 hum honge kamyab jai hind